this is Pam Gunderson, host of You and Him Ministries Bible Study and Christian News. To be notified for the next video study or news report, simply click subscribe, then the bell, and you'll be notified. If you wish to get a better view of this video in horizontal HD on your phone, click at the top on the horizontal three buttons then look down in your phone and click on your browser. Then click the little square, white square at the bottom of the video. It'll open up in horizontal HD. God bless. Good morning, saints, church, and people that are looking in to continue reading daily words from the Bible. We're going to be doing the whole Bible this year reading consecutively. My name is Pam Gunderson. I am the host of You and Him Ministries Bible Study and Christian Prophetic News. Today's reading is January the 8th and it's Genesis 15 verse 1 through chapter 16 verse 1 through 16, Psalm 5 verses 1 through 7, Proverbs chapter 2 verses 6 through 9 and Matthew chapter 6 verses 19 through 34. Uh, this will get us by this time next year through the whole Bible and at that point the Holy Spirit can bring rem things back to your remembrance that he wants you to know because 2022 a lot of things are going to develop spiritually. I have got my ear to the prophetic voices all over. And as the Lord speaks to me, we've got many uh, people that say angels are coming to them and speaking this and that and things about Trump. And I don't know what the truth is other than this word. This word of God is the truth, and that's what I am standing on right now as a minister and host of You and Him Ministries. Uh, Lord, I just ask you to bless these readings, Father, in Jesus' name, and by your Holy Spirit, bring back to remembrance and insight into anything, principles and precepts from the readings that we're doing today. Lord, we bless you, we give you honor, and we give you glory, and we bless the people that are listening and reading with us. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. And we are reading from the New King James Version, and... If you go along with that version, you will be better off. Of course, then you can reread it in the uh, thing that you prefer to read out of. Okay, beginning with cha uh, Genesis chapter 15. <clears throat> After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. After what things? What we read last was... Melchizedek, the king of Salem, who is probably uh, an epiphany of Jesus Christ, which we can discuss maybe uh, as the Lord brings it up on a special study. But look up epiphany. It's an epiphany um, representing Christ, the bread and the wine. So after he has spoken to the king of Salem and also the king of Sodom who wants to uh, give uh, Abram some goods uh, for uh, peace settlement and that sort of thing. Abram takes nothing other than for his servants. And you can go back and review that on January 7th. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and exceedingly great reward. And don't we need a great shield right now during these um, mandates that are going out from state to state? Verse 2, but Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? And the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. Three. Then Abram said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. 
4. And behold, the word of the Lord came to Abram, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. <clears throat> Verse 6. Then he brought him outside, God brought Abram outside, and said, Look now toward heaven, and count the stars, if you are able to number them. And he, God said to Abram, So shall your descendants be. Verse 6. And he believed, oh, that was verse 5, at 6, and he believed in the Lord. He believed in the Lord. And he accounted it to him for righteousness. God accounted uh, our belief in him to righteousness. Not just Abram, but us. <clears throat> And Abram believed in the Lord, what he was saying, what he was blessing him with. He believed it. Therefore, he could possess it and apprehend it. Seven. Then, Abram, then God said to Abram, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chalde Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. Verse eight. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I shall inherit it? How shall I know? Abram's asking the Lord. 9. So the Lord said to him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Wow. So, you know, Abram's got to do some work in collecting these things. Uh, we know he has, uh, has cattle, but he's got to find out which one's three years old. Which one's a female? A turtle dove and a young pigeon. And verse 10, Then he brought all these to God and cut them in two down the middle and cut them in two down the middle and placed each piece opposite the other. Uh, but he did not cut the birds in two. 11, And when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. 12. Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. 13. Then he said, then God said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them four hundred years. Now that is most likely uh <clears throat> when uh, the Israelites or the Hebrews went to Egypt before Exodus. 14, and also the nation whom they serve, I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out with great, the, they will come out with great possessions. Who will be coming out with great possessions? Uh, Moses bringing the Jews out of Egypt. 15, now as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a good old age. 16. But in the fourth generation they shall return here. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. So you might want to look up, do a study. Look uh, for what is the iniquity of the Amorites. Verse 17. And it came to pass when the sun went down and it was dark, that behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between those pieces. 18. On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I have given this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. 19. The, Ken the Kenites, the Kenizzites, Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, Verse 20, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Ref, Rephaim, 21, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. Chapter 16. Now Sarai, she hasn't gotten her Sarah yet. She's Sarai with an A-I. Abram's wife <clears throat> had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. 
too. So Sarai said to Abraham, you know, we always come up with a good idea. Oh my God, God hasn't done anything yet. So I'm going to come up with my good idea because he must have meant when he said I was supposed to have great wealth. I guess I'm going to go collect it from, oh, I don't know, um, a casino, a lottery ticket. God can speak anything he wants to to you, but you might want to come up with God's good idea, not yours. So Sarai said to Abraham, Abram, see now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go in to my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abram heeded the voice of Sarai. Husbands, be careful at adhering to your wife's advice, especially if they're not, and you, uh, you are unequally yoked, and vice versa with a woman. If you are un, uh, uh, yoked with an unbelieving husband, because a lot of you got saved after you got married. A lot of you were not born again when you got married. You didn't know God could put you. And some of you are preacher's kids. Some of you are preacher's kids that ran from God because you had so much preaching going on in the house. You decided to see what the world had to offer. All kinds of different things are going on. But you be, uh, you listen to what God says, then you can have a discussion with your spouse, with your mate, as long as you're married, not living with someone. Living with someone, they tomorrow could wake up and tell you they're leaving, they don't like you anymore, and take your dog. Uh, so be very careful at what you are adhering to. You want to adhere to what God is saying. If you get a check in your spirit, don't do it. <clears throat> so then Sarai in verse 3 Abram's wife took uh, then Sarai Abram's wife took Hagar her maid the Egyptian and gave her to her husband here 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 take her Abraham Abram to be his wife after Abram had dwelt Ten years in the land of Canaan. Verse 4. So he went in to Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. And that's the way it goes, folks. It isn't any different today. Nothing new under the sun. Solomon told you that. Nothing new. Then Sarai said to Abraham, my wrong be upon you. Oh, really? You listened to me. Now what I, it was all wrong, and now I'm blaming you for it. You fornicated. You committed adultery with my maid. You shouldn't have listened to me. That's pretty much what she's saying. My wrong is upon you. I gave you my maid into your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between you and me. Can you imagine the strife that just hit that household? Uh, we, <laughs> we have instances where a, a woman can't bear a child, so her husband and her decide to get a surrogate uh, mother. Even I've heard some... Uh, uh, the wife's uh, mother or the mother-in-law decided to carry a baby for them. Um, I guess it was in vitro injections, that sort of thing. Is that really God's idea? If, if you're supposed to have a child, do you not think that God is big enough to give you a child? I remember I would like to have had a son, but I didn't get a son. However, I have some spiritual uh, sons uh, because he must have known I wouldn't have been that great or it wouldn't have been healthy for me or whatever. Why don't we listen to the Lord? What is wrong with us? Seriously, folks. Why do we put our desire 
above God's best for us. Verse 6, so Abram said to Sarai, <laughs> Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Sarai dealt harshly with her, Hagar fled from her presence. Verse 7, now the angel of the Lord found Hagar by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur. Verse 8, and he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? Sarah said, or Hagar said, I'm fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarai. Verse 9, the angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Verse 10, then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not so that they shall not be counted for multitude verse 11 and the angel of the lord said to her behold you are with child and you shall bear a son you shall call his name ishmael because the lord has heard your affliction okay remember when we're praying for someone <clears throat> and they are in affliction that is a different command to that demon or that um, thing that is causing the problem than a sickness or a disease. Affliction is not necessarily disease. An affliction is uh, almost like it could be like the thorn in the flesh that Paul had. Something that you are afflicted, but you are going to obey the Lord through the affliction. You are not dying. You have an affliction that very well could have been sent by the Lord to see how obedient you're going to be in order to get the blessing ultimately. That's my um, bent on it. You may have a different view. Comment. Remember, comment. Thumbs up. Comment. Go to the end so the analytics can push this through and suggest these readings to third world countries, anyone that's looking in on Facebook or YouTube, God will bless you. I may be your affliction that God has put before you, but if you will obey and do what it is that we have to do in order to get the word out, you will apprehend the blessing. Not me, but you and the people that God wants to save and hear the word who may or may not accept the Lord through the word, but at least they can't go to him and say, well, we didn't know. We never heard the word. Yes, Sister Pamela was reading it every day in 2022, and you wouldn't listen. Okay, and we know that this multitude of people is now our affliction. They're Muslims. Her affliction has become our affliction. And we must pray that the Muslims get saved. I guess thousands of them are having visions of the Lord Jesus coming to them. But nonetheless, they hate Christianity and they have no good thing in store for us. And we need to pray. Verse 13. Then Hagar called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees. For she said, have I also here seen him who sees me? Uh, I'm sure that there is a Hebrew uh, name. It could be Rofi, um, Zidkanu. We know Jehovah Jireh is uh, our provider. And so she, her word is, you are the God who sees. Somebody want to look that up and give it to us in the Hebrew down in the comment section? Verse 14, be the hero today. Find out who that is, what God's name is uh, in the Hebrew. You are the God who sees, it's in verse 13 of, of Genesis 16, okay? Have I also here seen him who sees me? 14. Therefore the well was called Ber Lahai Roy. Observe, it is between Kadesh and Barad. 
Verse 15, so Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his name, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Verse 16, Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. I will say, I don't know if I was stark raving mad, I was not born again, but I was saved, but I wasn't living for God. I had accepted the Lord by sinner's prayer. As I said before, the sinner's prayer is not going to save you. Living for the Lord is going to save you. You have to work it out. But when I was in the hospital, I heard a voice say, name her Hetty. Hetty is short for Mehetable, and Mehetable is in the Bible, and an angel of the, well, the Lord actually came to my room and uh, said to me, Pamela, you uh, were upset with me because uh, you all of your Christian friends had children who had biblical names, and you were upset with me because uh, your child did not have a biblical name, and you listened to the person who came to your room. Well, I'm giving you the fact that it's short for Mehetable that is in, and she is, um, she was the mother of Pau who had uh, some kind of withholding thing when they were building the temple and the Lord said, your daughter has that anointing on her. And I was able to share that with her when she came to visit me that week because God knew she was coming and I was thrilled. I remember, oh my gosh, that is so wonderful. And what's really funny is I didn't read this beforehand, and the Lord brought that up to me this morning about the angel that had uh, come to me, uh, uh, the Lord had come to my room. I've had uh, an angel, and I have seen uh, the Lord, I've heard his voice, and I've heard his voice twice uh, giving instruction. So... Uh, I would love to have angels flying in and out, giving me, and that could happen as we go. But <laughs> when I hear someone say, an angel came to me and said this, 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 and this, I can't disbelieve them because I know that I've had such an experience. Not to prophesy to anybody, but to me. It had nothing to do with, tell the people. No, it wasn't, tell the people. No, it wasn't that. It was you and I did this and I want you to do this but it had nothing to do with anybody else and one word that I got and I was not reading the Bible and I know I never read it before my whole life never until recently I saw it in scripture the word that the Lord gave me back when I was 29 um, how old was I 20 going into 21 and started working for Roadway Express. You shall never taste of death in this life. I'm coming back for you. I hold on to that promise. And all of a sudden, it's in Scripture. I read it the other day. I'm like, that's in Scripture. I know I never read that. I don't think I ever heard it in a church. Very seldom does a pastor read Scripture from the pulpit anymore. And back then, they might have, but... My, the Holy Spirit would have had to have brought it back to my remembrance, but I wasn't going to church. I was not going to church. That was the farthest thing from my mind. I was busy becoming a famous opera singer and uh, had just gotten married. Forget about church. you got to be kidding. No, not at all. I was having a good time. Not that I'm not now, but my idea of a good time when I was 20 and 21 years old, it had nothing to do with God's destiny for my life. None. And when I heard that voice cross my desk, I couldn't believe it. And things happened after I heard that voice. It set something in motion. So we can hear the voice of the Lord. Psalm 5, verses 1 through 7. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Two, give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For you I will pray. Verse three, my voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. At the very least in the morning, good morning, Lord as you're scrambling out of bed because you overslept and you need to get to work. Of course, those are the days 
that may be gone. Now we have to just go to our office and work because we can't get into the workplace <clears throat> for one or another reason. Verse 4, for you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. 5, the boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. 6, you shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. 7, but as far for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. In the fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. I'm reading and I'm hearing the Lord. I just heard Marilyn Hickey. Why am I hearing Marilyn Hickey? <laughs> Let's pray for Mary. Lord, I, we lift up Marilyn Hickey to you. I don't even know if she's still alive. I, I know she had a daughter. Lord, why, are, why am I thinking of Marilyn Hickey, Father? Lord, I lift her up to you. Your blessings on her father in Jesus' name. I believe she was a minister on TBN. Lord, I don't know what she's doing, but God bless her. You're perfect well on earth as it is in heaven, on Marilyn Hickey's life. Proverbs 2, verses 6 through 9. Verse 6, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Verse 7, He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. Repeat this. He is a shield to me who I, as I walk uprightly. The Lord God is my shield as I walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves, preserves the way of his saints. He preserves my way. The Lord preserves my way. I am a saint because I am a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. I have not been canonized by the Catholic Church. The minute I started following Christ, I am Saint Pamela. You out there are saint, whoever's watching right now. Verse 9. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity and every good path. I said yesterday, look up that word equity. Somebody put a comment in there. What is the equity they're talking about on the left that God is talking about in his word. I believe there is a difference. And I believe somebody out there prophetically will see it and be able to comment on it. Matthew 6, verses 19 through 20, 34. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. 20. But you... Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. So if you're giving to a ministry or you're tithing, which you should be doing uh, for your own sake, <laughs> you're not doing it for God, you're doing it for your own sake to keep the thieves out. Um, if you're not doing it, don't be surprised if somebody steals your car and you won't be able to find it. God has... Uh, it's like a GPS. He'll know where your car is in a second if somebody takes it and he'll get it back to you. Or he'll give you a better one. Or however it is that he does. Uh, we have two people now, both with the same name. Their cars have been stolen within the last three days. Gone. Uh, I actually said something to my husband. Uh, I have a new car and we're getting. I'm getting ready to uh, do something different. And I want to keep that car safe. I said, could I put a tracker underneath the car so that if somebody did try to do something, it would come up on my phone, that I'd be able to trace it? He said, yes. Yes. Well, God is my tracer. But if I have the ability to do something physically, God's not going to say, don't do that because I'm going to do it for you. No, we're supposed to do everything we possibly can. And when we've done all that we can, stand. Verse 22, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be good and full of light. I added a word. It'll be full of light. 
But if, uh, as, as if you're reading along with me, you'll realize I, I put a, an extra word in there. You need to have your Bibles out. 23, but if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Okay, he's asking us a question. How great is your darkness? How great is your light? When you walk into a room, does your light shine? When you walk into Walmart, do people look up and go, oh, there's something different about that person. I'm being drawn to that person. That's called a light. Arise, shine, for thy light has come. I believe that's in Isaiah. Verse 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And mammon is things money, wealth. Uh, verse, uh, or riches. Wealth is something God can give you. Riches is something you can accumulate for yourself and you can lose it for yourself. Uh, 25. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body and you will put on and or what you will put on. Uh, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Verse 26. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? 27. Which of you by worrying can add one cubit, cubit to his stature? We have had a flood out here. My husband's uh, business has been flooded out, but when he went down today, praise God, all the water has gone. It was like a magic. And now I know, not me, I don't know, but I do know that I drove through all of that water all around Aberdeen and through Cosmopolis, and I said, water, use the D word on it, wasn't decrease, but it was go, go back, go back, go back. Rain, stop. Wind, stop. I command you in the name of Jesus. Well, the wind is gone, the rain is gone, and the flood is gone. Our prayers work because they said that we were going to continue having this even as uh, later today. It's gone. It's as if it never happened but the destruction is there now it's clean up okay so i pray for all of you who are having to clean up the damage that the storms have done and i have interestingly enough you can't see it but let me take it off here so i can read it exactly i was impressed by something i saw it was a little pendant it's a little doodad nothing pendant but, oh, actually it says, be stronger than the storm. And I just received it uh, within this week. And I was drawn to it. You be stronger than the storm that's in your life. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. No weapon formed against you or me will prosper. And I believe there are silver linings in clouds. Verse 28, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. 29, and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. 30, now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith, verse 31, therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear, verse 32, for after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, 
33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. 34. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Don't look for it. It'll come. Don't look for it tomorrow. It'll come. But the word concern, you can be concerned for your children, loved ones, raise them up to God. I praise the Lord that he keeps his promises to me as he will keep his promises to you. They're all in the word. If you're not reading the word, then you don't know what his promises are for you. I thank anyone who is listening in. Keep the faith. Be persistent in our reading. And you will be blessed as I'm being blessed by doing this discipline. It will be every day. And I will unless uh, something tragic happens that I cannot get to this uh, computer or to um, this camera. Lord, uh, actually, Jude, let me look up. Um, uh, see if I can find this for some reason. This is not working right. Huh. Of course not, because I'm trying to do something. Let me put this on another thing. Uh, how are you all doing today, anyway? <laughs> okay, let me try this again. Okay, now it's working. I'm having trouble with my ma the mouse. I want to go to Blue Letter Bible. And I want to look up Jude. I'm being reminded that you people need a blessing. And let's see what Jude does. I don't think Jude's very big. I think it's verse 11. Uh, there we go. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Jude one twenty four. Jude 25, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Lord God, I ask that you bless these people and you bless these readings, Lord, that we do the word, not just hear or read the word. And if anyone there uh, is not born again or saved, you have my contact information at the end of this video. As I said before, the sinner's prayer does not save you. It is obeying the word of God. It is prayer and reading the word and following Jesus. I have a sinner's prayer that I can say, but it would make these two. Uh, you can call me and I'll be more than happy to pray with you individually. <clears throat> uh, you can make a comment down in the bottom, but... Uh, if, um, you can get a hold of me at Pam at UNHimMinistries.com or you can call me at 833-726-8255 and you'll see everything at the end. At the, um, which way am I going? The end of the video. Comment, please. Subscribe. Uh, put a like so that these uh, videos and the analytics will uh, not shadow ban us. I wish you a good day, and I will see you on January the 9th. God bless. Oh, and school starts this Monday on the 10th, not the 17th. So I will be very busy. So if you can get a hold of me, 
uh, leave a message at the 833 number uh, and I will get back to you or leave a message at uh, youandhimministries.com in the chat or email section and I'll contact you back that way. God bless you and you have a blessed day in our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Lord Christ Jesus. Bye-bye.